right, in this lecture we are going to talk about the cost of production and we're going to focus again on short run production. Um, yesterday we talked about short run uh, production in terms of the inputs to production and now we're going to talk about short run production um, in terms of the cost of production. Again, um, the short run is the period of time in which some of the firm's cost commitments will not have ended. So in regards to production, we say the short run means some of the inputs are fixed. And in, in um, regards to costs, we say that short run production is when some of the costs are fixed and, and can't be changed. Um, in the long run, that's a period of time long enough for all the firm's commitments to have come to an end. Um, so all costs are variable in the long run. And the costs of production include the payments to the productive resources. Um, so some of those costs, like we said, are fixed and some are variable. Fixed costs don't change. Um, these are the costs of inputs whose quantity don't rise when output goes up and that the firm requires to produce any output at all. So again, these are costs that stay the same month to month, such as rent or um, your mortgage payment for the building that you're leasing or the building that, you're, that you own. Um, machine repairs, and that's on there because um, typically productive plants have machine repl uh, replacement or repair plans where they pay a set fee every month. Um, so that would be a fixed cost if it's a set fee every month. Um, property taxes, again, stay the same month to month. Um, salaries of top workers, any salaried employees will be fixed costs because um, whether they're working a ton of extra hours or not working much at all, you're paying them a set amount of money week to week. Variable costs change with the quantity produced. Um, that little triangle is the Greek sign for delta, so delta means change. Um, so variable costs do change in the short run depending on the quantity of production. Um, these costs can be altered and more costs become variable in the long run and eventually in the extreme long run everything is variable. Um, so these are the things that you know if you produce more it costs you more. So raw materials, you know if you produce more you need more raw materials. Hourly employees, um, you know the more workers you have on the shift the more you have to pay them. The reason that hourly employees are variable costs and salaried employees are fixed costs is salaried employees make the same amount of money no matter how many hours they work, but hourly employees are just paid based on how much they work. Um, electricity, again, you pay for that based on how much you use. Gas for the company car, you pay for the amount of gas that you use. So anything that varies depending on how much is produced is a variable cost. Fixed costs are going to be there whether output is zero or a million. So um, a little clue when you're doing calculations is that if there are any costs at zero units of output, then you know that that is the amount of, of the fixed costs. Okay, and just a little bit of review from unit one. Some costs are explicit and some costs are implicit. Explicit costs are when direct payments are made and money changes hands. So money costs are explicit costs, but implicit costs are things like opportunity costs, um, loss of opportunities to use your resources on other things. Um, some implicit costs of production would be like the cost of using your own money, um, such as foregone interest that you could be earning when you, you know, if you were to have invested your money in the stock market, but instead you use that money to start your own company, you know, you're giving up the chance to earn interest in the stock market or earn dividends. Um, depreciation of all capital goods, as you use that equipment, it's going to depreciate, and so the value of that depreciation is an implicit cost. The cost of owner-occupied resources, um, if, like if you work out of your home, there's an implicit cost there. Uh, foregone wages, you know, if you, if you own a company, um, you could be earning money working for someone else, so you give up the chance to earn wages in a different job. Patents and copyrights um, have implicit costs, just thinking about the value of some of the brand names and labels that are out there and web websites and things like that. Um, for example, Coca-Cola, you know, how much do you think that the, the name Coca-Cola is worth? You know, there's definitely an implicit cost there. Um, special advantages and cost of using other people's money, 
Again, if you have to borrow money to um, to produce or begin a company or finance your company, then you're going to have to pay interest um, to borrow that money. All right, so now we're going to get into some of the different cost figures that you're going to need to know and um, what they mean, what the graphs look like, how you calculate them, um, and then all these things will be used when we do our analysis of profit maximization and market structure analysis at the end of this unit and in unit five. So for now, just learn what they are and um, what they mean and how you calculate them. So total cost, this is the, the simplest one. Um, the total cost is the total cost of producing any level of output when inputs are optimally employed. So it's just all your cost of production at, at a given level. Um, economists do calculate implicit costs. So they do include the implicit costs um, in the cost figures that you're given. So you can assume that the implicit costs are accounted for. And the way you calculate total cost is you're just going to add together your fixed and variable cost of production at a certain level of output. And total cost will increase, again, we're just focusing on short run production, so in the short run, total cost will continue to increase um, as you produce more and more units of output. So let's look at a, a sample of a total cost graph here. This is Al's total cost curve um, for garages. So he manufactures or builds garages. And you can see that the more garages he builds, the more it costs. This is because the more garages you build, the more materials you need, the more workers you have to hire, um, etc. So let's look at a couple other total cost uh, figures. So rather than looking at all of the costs combined, sometimes you will just be asked to analyze the total fixed costs or all of the fixed costs of production. So these are the costs whose quantity does not rise when output increases and that the firm requires to produce any output at all. So again, this is going to be the cost at zero units of output. And um, at any level of output, the way you figure out which costs are fixed is you subtract your variable costs from your total cost. And whatever's left over is the amount of your fixed costs. Um, the total fixed cost curve is going to be a horizontal line. Let's take a look at that graph here. Um, because fixed costs by definition don't change. So if Al's garage company has $12,000 a year in fixed costs, then whether he's manufacturing zero or ten garages, um, his fixed cost of production will still be $12,000. Total variable costs um, are just all the costs of production that vary. So these are the costs that can be altered, and again, in the short run, um, not all costs are variable, but in the long run, they are. But since we're focusing on short-run production, there will be um, some fixed costs and some variable costs. So variable costs are just all your costs of production, the total costs, um, minus whatever your fixed costs are, and that will leave you with your, your total variable costs. Um, the total variable cost curve has the sh same shape as the total cost curve, but it's going to lie below the total cost curve by the amount of the fixed costs, since the difference between total cost and total variable cost is total fixed cost, and total fixed cost doesn't change. So this graph shows that very nicely here. If the total fixed cost is 100 bucks, then you can see that total variable cost lies below total cost by $100 at any given level of output. So it's going to increase as output increases. All right, now let's talk about some averages. Average total cost is just cost per unit of output. It's just an average. So this is very simple to calculate. Um, it's just your, your total cost of production divided by the quantity produced. Um, another way to calculate this, depending on the data that's available to you, is by adding the average fixed and average variable costs together. And the average total cost curve is U-shaped. And there are four reasons for that, and you will need to know all four of these reasons. They're on this slide here, so make sure you write these down. Average total cost decreases in the beginning of the downward sloping U-shape um, because, first of all, fixed costs are being spread out amongst increasing units of output. So fixed costs don't change, but as you increase your level of output, um, the average fixed cost 
is going to decrease as output increases. So um, that's going to pull the average total cost down as you produce more and more. Um, also, increasing marginal returns are being enjoyed. So what that means is your inputs to production are becoming more and more productive than the inputs before that. So each input is adding more and more to total output, which is driving average total cost down as output increases. Um, and then we hit a point where average total cost begins to increase. So the upward sloping portion of the U-shaped curve. Um, and the two reasons for the increasing portion are diminishing marginal returns set in. So we eventually reach that point where your inputs, even though they may still be adding to total output, they're adding less than the input before them. So um, they're adding less and less to total output, driving average total cost up. And then um, when companies become big and production levels become high, um, there's just increasing administrative costs that go along with running a, a large business. So these are the four reasons for the U-shaped average total cost curve. And here's the sample average total cost curve um, in the short run here. You can see that it's U-shaped for those four reasons that we just discussed. Um, a couple of other average figures to know are average fixed cost which is just your fixed cost per unit of output. Again, just an average, so your total fixed cost divided by quantity produced. Um, an average fixed cost is going to fall as output increases. Um, the curve is going to approach zero but never reach zero. So let's take a look at an average fixed cost curve here for Al's garages. Um, you'll notice his, his total fixed costs were $12,000, so as output increases, you're going to take that $12,000 and divide it by larger and larger numbers to get the average, which is going to cause that curve to continue to decrease. And finally, the last average here is average variable cost, which uh, will become handy um, eventually here. Um, so this is variable cost per unit of output. Total variable cost divided by the quantity produced. And the average variable cost curve is another U-shaped curve um, for the same reasons, basically, as we described that, that the average total cost curve is U-shaped. And it's going to lie below average total cost by the amount of average fixed cost, since the difference between average total cost and average variable cost is average fixed cost. So this chart shows uh, nicely the relationship between average total and average variable cost, and also um, how average fixed cost comes into play and um, declines and approaches zero. Uh, this graph also shows marginal costs and um, we're going to discuss that curve next. So one thing to notice here is that marginal cost um, intersects average total cost and average variable cost at their lowest points. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Alright, marginal cost. This is one of the calculations that will be most useful to us as economists because we use marginal analysis to make decisions. Um, so marginal cost is the increase in total cost when you produce an additional unit of output. So just like the other marginal calculations that we've done previously in the course, um, you're just looking for a rate of change. Uh, marginal cost is the derivative of total cost um, or the derivative of total variable cost because those two curves have the same slope at any given point. Um, so you can either calculate marginal costs by dividing the change in total cost by the change in quantity produced or by dividing total variable cost by the change in quantity produced. And uh, the marginal cost curve is going to um, have kind of a, a Nike swoosh kind of a shape or a check mark kind of a shape. Um, and it is going to be a mirror image of marginal product. So think back to the marginal product curve we learned about when we talked about inputs to production. This marginal cost curve is going to mirror that curve. Um, this is kind of a funny example for marginal cost, um, but you know this is just showing a portion of the marginal cost curve. It would continue to increase um, past 10 units of output. And finally, this last graph shows the relationship between average and marginal product and average and marginal cost.